So once again, please help me welcome to the podium Andrew Hazelwood. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll just explain how we're going to do this in the true tripartite spirit. Uh, between myself uh, and uh, Ian and Doug, we're going to walk you through a PowerPoint, uh, which is the inevitable PowerPoint of every, any presentation. Uh, and we're going to kind of alternate back and forth. Uh, and the subject matter that we have is really uh, tripartite in nature. We're not uh, trying to say this is a provincial area of responsibility and this is First Nations area. Somebody can't hear me. I'll try to get a little lower. Uh, maybe I'm just too tall. <laughs> uh, so we're going to walk through a series of PowerPoints. Uh, the PowerPoints uh, kind of focus in on both, uh, on all of the tripartite areas of this project. Uh, and we've tried purposely not to segregate it into this is a provincial view or vision, this is a First Nations view or vision, and a federal view. Uh, what we're trying to do is to work in a tripartite way, and that's part of the challenges. Uh, so I'm not sure who decided who would go first, but apparently it was me and I have the dreaded timeline. Uh, but we did think it was important to spend just a few minutes uh, discussing how we got here. Uh, and it may be a bit small to read, but I'll just highlight some of the uh, key milestones of how we got uh, to today, really, and in, in our discussions around governance. Uh, many of you will recall that back in kind of February, March of 05, uh, Premier Campbell committed to a process with the First Nations provincial leadership to establish a new relationship. Uh, in March, the First Nations Summit and the Union of BC Indian Chiefs and the BC Assembly of First Nations signed uh, what I think is a real historic accord. Uh, it, it led to the creation of the First Nations Leadership Council. Uh, that was a huge touch point in this whole process. You could probably go back several more years, but for the purpose of this presentation, we've, we've decided to start in, in March of 05. In July of 05, uh, First Nations got together uh, with the uh, province's support to begin discussions around a blueprint, and that was really an outcome of the meetings of First Ministers in uh, September of 04. Uh, the Ministry of Health began that dialogue with BC Aboriginal organizations uh, kind of in May. Uh, we tried to be as inclusive as possible, and I think it's important just to spend a, a bit of time to go through the organizations that were consulted with in developing uh, the provincial blueprint for health. Uh, we met with the First Nations uh, Summit Society, the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, the United Native Nations, the Métis Provincial Council, the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centres, the Community Health Associates of BC, the BC Aboriginal Network on Disability Society, uh, Aboriginal health experts from the University of British Columbia, uh, elders and Aboriginal health directors from each of the health authorities. Uh, many of those people uh, are probably in this room that began those deliberations. Uh, the provincial focus on a blueprint was followed up uh, with a Health Canada First Nations focus on uh, the similar subject. That happened in June of 05. And both of those reports really became another major milestone of just what, what was the vision of health uh, from a First Nations perspective within BC. In November of 05, uh, the Transformative Change Accord uh, was declared. And this was really the First Nations Leadership Council uh, of First Nations, the Government of British Columbia, the, and the Government of Canada signed the Transformative Change Accord. And I think this is, you know, one of the most important pieces that's led us here today. Uh, that accord recognized that there was a gap to be closed, and it wasn't just a gap in health, but there was a gap in education, housing, economic opportunities, and health. And I think if you understand the social determinants of health, progress on the other three uh, commitments around the Transformative Change Accord uh, are as important as progress around health and health actions. Uh, if we can really start dealing with the social determinants of health through education, through housing and economic opportunities, you really will also close the gap in health status. Uh, and it was that document 
uh, that led us to really the bilateral First Nations health plan. The province sat down with First Nations in this province and agreed on a series of activities and actions. Uh, much of tomorrow will be spent on, on progress reports on those activities and actions. But the, the interesting thing here is the province signed the bilateral First Nations health plan. We also signed a memorandum of understanding, very similar to uh, what Doug was mentioning, what we're attempting to do here. A memorandum of agreement that we would work together and actually turn the bilateral health plan uh, into a trilateral agreement. And it was on June the 11th, 2007, that the tripartite uh, health plan uh, was signed. Again, it's the first in the country, as been mentioned. It's uh, the three levels of government, uh, First Nations, the province, and the federal government that have come together. And it was in that trilateral agreement where the, first, or where the federal government committed to move away from a designer and a deliverer of health services uh, to really be a funder and a governance partner. And it's that work that we're going to focus in today. But there is a history of that work dating back to 2005, uh, where we really spent a lot of time figuring out uh, what is the vision for health and health services for First Nations within this province. Uh, that turned into a bilateral agreement, uh, really focused in on a component of the transformative change accord. And I think the transformative change accord is really the milestone that allowed us to proceed with a health accord that recognized that health can't solve by itself uh, the health status of populations. You really need the social determinants lens, and that's education, economic development, and the others. So that's a bit of history. I'm going to turn it over to Ian for the next slide.